Janae and this is my cash stopping journey. If you're new here, thank you so much for taking a chance and clicking on my video. I hope you decide to like, subscribe and stick around for a while. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your ongoing support. So today is going to be a completely random video. Um, I was in one of my cash stopping Facebook groups and I made a post about how I had 700 envelopes that I need to make for my Etsy store. And I had um, quite a few people ask how how they're made so I thought the easiest way would be for me to jump on here real quick make a video and then everyone can watch it and re-watch it and make along so what I thought I would do is I'm just gonna make one like make a few envelopes and walk you through step by step so you are going to need a piece of cardstock or some crafting paper um, this cardstock here is very, um, it's very high quality cardstock. It is 200, I think it was 260 GSM, which is the thickness, the thickness of it. Uh, 210. So this is 210, so it's, it's very thick, but you can use just normal craft paper. Um, you can pretty much use anything you want, really. Like, you could, you could get blank printer paper and draw pictures or print stuff it's completely up to you um, the thicker the cardstock the thicker the envelope like the sturdier the envelope will be but when picking whatever you're going to make your envelope item out of you need to also sorry that was my laminator just letting me know that it's warm um, you also need to take into account what laminating sheets you are going to use and what your laminator can handle so for example i have a i have a really decent laminator because i have an etsy store so i'm using it constantly and it can handle up to um 250 microns so when you buy laminating sheets if you look on the box hopefully you can see this but if you look on the box, it'll also it'll always give you a micron measurement. So this one's two times eighty, which is each side of the sheet. So in total, it's one hundred and sixty. When you're buying a laminator and laminating sheets, you need to make sure that the laminator you're purchasing can handle the microns of the laminating sheets. Because if you don't, either it's not going to seal or you're going to have to run it through the laminator multiple times and that takes a lot of time. So just when you're thinking about what you're going to make your envelopes out of, keep that kind of stuff in mind. Now you can do, if you're going to have the envelopes in a box, I highly recommend you buy the box first because then you know what measurements to make your envelopes always keep in mind that you are going to need a little bit extra space because you, the envelope let me just pull one out the envelope is going to have like additional laminate on the side so i always make my envelopes eight centimeters by eight centimeters and then it's probably got at least half a centimeter of laminate on the outside so yeah technically they'd be nine by nine um, by the time you kind of added it all up Okay, so once you know, once you've got your box and you know how big your envelopes want, you will need something to cut it with. So I have these paper cut. I've got a paper cutter and one I use for cardstock. So this is for cardstock that I use it for, and this is for paper only because this one rips when I have the patterned paper, so it doesn't have a smooth cut. So that's why I have a separate one. You don't need that. Uh, you could use a ruler, a pencil, and a pair of scissors. You don't need this kind of stuff. So a lot of these come with um, rulers on the bottom that flip out. Um, it took me way too long to realize that. And I think it was TikTok that like, made me realize that. Um, and it usually has measurements down it. Now, once you know how wide you want your envelope to be, um, you need to double that for the length. So, for example, my envelopes are eight centimeters wide. Now, I need to fold it in half, so I need to double that. So, 16. And then you cut. 
Now, because of how wide this is here, I hope you can see this. Because of how wide this is, I can get another envelope out of that. So we go to eight centimeters and then cut. And then I need it 16 long. So then cut. And then we'll cut this up into eight centimeter, um, eight centimeters wide. So out of a 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter pad of cardstock, I can get four envelopes in the sizing I use. So that's them there. So then you fold them in half. And that gives you that eight by eight. So let's fold all these in half. Uh, this is an example of like a, paper, a slightly thinner cardstock that I use. And then I also have some like just craft paper. So fold these in half. Now laminating sheets. If you, there is multiple thicknesses of laminate sheets and it all depends on what you're going to use it for. If you're going to access these envelopes once a year, like if you're going to stuff it and then leave it and then unstuff it at the end of the year, you could go for a thinner laminate, which are generally cheaper. But for durability, and I recommend if you're making them to sell, I would pick a higher quality, thicker laminating sheet. So I, for my store, I use, I use 250. Now, from what I can find, not a lot of laminators can handle this thickness. So make sure that when you're buying a laminator, you really research to see what thickness it can handle and how hot it gets because that will let you know if it can handle this thickness or if you're going to have to feed it through multiple times. So you've got your laminate sheet now. So you open it up and it comes with like a gloss side and a matte side. It's joined at the top. So you just flip it open. Then with your envelopes, I always lay it with the crease facing out and then just put them in the laminating sheet. Try and see this um, seam here, try and butt them right up against that seam. It actually saves you time because you don't have to cut those ones. And then you just, I can usually get six envelopes to um, a single laminating sheet. Now something about when you're laminating them, try and keep your workspace as clean as possible. Because if you're going to be selling these, you don't want to have things like crumbs and cat hair and dust in the laminating sheet because you will see it on the envelope. If if it gets like, for example, I when I first started, I my cats used to get into everything, so I would have like cat hair in it, and like you can't use that envelope, so you'd have to throw it out. So this is my laminator, I'm going to be careful because it's hot. This is my laminator, my, I have a GBC ILAM 350 and it's the A4 model. I am saving up currently to get the bigger one um, because I I have a, an Etsy store so I use this all day every day um, and it's been amazing. So if you intend to sell these, I would invest in quality items and because it will make your job easier in the long run so now that you've got them in the you've got them in the laminating pouch the seam so where it's joined has to go into the laminator first and then you just feed that through and this can ta can take some time um, I think on average probably a good 15 20 seconds maybe even longer for it to go through um, We'll see how long it takes me to actually to feed it through. Um, 
when if you intend to sell these um, make sure you take into it all of this into account when you're doing your pricing because for me um, and I'm getting quite quick at doing them it takes me around two hours to do a single box of 100 envelopes so you need to take that into account into your pricing as well on top of all of the supplies you're using so like each laminating sheet and the card stock and all of that stuff okay so it's just finished now it's hot so try and not um, and it's very malleable so for example if I got if I got this straight out of a laminating sheet and bent the corner it would bend and then it would cool and you'd have a laminate which would be bent so try and keep your workspace clutter free because it will you can guarantee that the hot laminate will jam up against something and you can ruin envelopes I've done it myself so try and make sure that when it come when the laminating sheet comes out of the laminator it's falling onto a hard clean surface and it's got space behind it so that when it comes out it's gonna come out flat so now you've got these so they're complete they're laminated it's got a really good seal on it a handy tip see how here see how it looks that little bit frosted see that that means that it's not hot enough because these are really thick laminating sheets and my laminator is only marketed for I think it was 180 or maybe 200 um, microns on the sheets no 125 sorry because it's only marketed to 125 that means that it's not getting hot enough to melt the glue inside see that so if that was on this part of the envelope, it means it wouldn't have a seal on there and I would have to run it through again. Now, also, what you can tell is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but around here, there is like a border that goes right around the envelope and that's like the sealed part and then there's a pocket of like where it's sealed. Over here, it hasn't connect, it doesn't connect, which means that it hasn't sealed properly. So when I cut this, if I cut it too close, that em that side of the envelope is just going to pop open. So I always I cut them so I've got plenty of space. I hand cut these. Some people use their um, like use these to cut them, but it's probably quicker. But I find I don't have as much control. I feel I don't have as much control. So what I do is I then go through, go around and I have a look for that. Remember when we folded it? I look for that fold. All right? Because if you're going to have, like, see how here, how the envelope doesn't quite match up? It's better to cut on that, that line there than it is to cut here. Because then you're going to have that jacked up part at the bottom of your envelope. So find where you folded it and that's the bottom of your envelope so then you cut across the top and this is the opening and that's where the cash will go you see that so that's where the cash goes now see here there's like a hopefully you can see it but there's like a border around there you want to give that space so you always want to make sure that you give it probably at least I'd say maybe half a centimeter around each one so hopefully you can see this so you've got the cardstock and then you've got like a border with this where the seal is and then I've given it at least another half a centimeter on top of that and then that's the envelope now I've just noticed something see how remember before when I showed you it was frosted look what happened see how it hasn't sealed it's because the laminator wasn't hot enough for this thickness of this thickness of laminate because it's such a high quality thick one so you don't have to throw that out so this is a still a perfectly good envelope all you do is run it back through your laminator I always put it through twice 
so if that happens I run it through once then I so I run it through say this is the fold I run it through that way then I flip it round and run it through again with the opening first so I'm just doing that now Now, when it comes out, like I said, it'll be hot. So wait until it's fully cooled until you start trying to open it because while it's hot, you can still pull it back away from the cardstock. So that's starting to cool off now. And then see how it's completely sealed now? If, if you have an envelope and like whether you've bought one or you've made one and you don't have a laminator and it like pops open on the seam you can get a piece of um, like you can get a piece of baking paper and just run a straightening iron down there run a straightening iron down it and that should be hot enough to seal it try try it at your lowest setting first and increase the increase the um, like increase the temperature until it seals so yeah and then I always run my finger through the envelope to make sure that it's sealed on the ends I make sure that there's nothing in the envelope like there's no fur there's no dust there's no um, there's no imperfections and then that is a good envelope to go so we'll do it one more time so remember to find the find the fold and then cut along the opposite edge and that is the opening and then see this one this one's done it also see how it's separating then when you're cutting it you find the seal and give it at least probably I'd say half half a centimeter And this allows it to make sure that it has a really strong seal and then because this one has separated we're just going to run it back through now I there is nothing worse than reaching in and getting an envelope and getting a sharp corner either jabbing you in the finger or going up under your fingernail how many people have had that happen it's happened to me too many times for me to count so I actually go to the extra step one second let me pull it out and I bought one of these it's basically just a paper corner thing so it's got a small a medium and a large all you do is where's my envelope so can you see that pointy corner um, and because this is thick laminate that is really strong and it really hurts <laughs> so I pick what size I want so I, I always do medium you feed it into the corner so it's on an angle like that and clip it and see how it's now cornered that edge and it's made it now so that when you reach in to get your envelopes you're not going to jab yourself um, I got this off of Amazon now if you are making if you're going to make envelopes that go in a binder like these ones one second let me just pull one out now i make these envelopes um these are just for me i don't put these in my store because these are very involved these envelopes um, they're made the exact same way you cut it to the width then you double the length fold it in half put it in the laminating sheet and through the laminator exact same process um, so if you want to make these envelopes for a binder I find for me the best measurement is let me see so it's about eight and a half centimeters high folded and 18 centimeters across and then this bit here I put it in my when I'm cutting them I put it in my cutting machine 
I put this edge, which is the folded edge, to the cutting blade. And then see what your measurement is, so down here. Then add on a centimeter and a half. So add on a centimeter and a half, and then cut it. And this gives you the space you need for your hole punches. Then, I also got this off Amazon. It is a multi-sized hole punch. So, um, it's got this thing here that extends. So, I think it goes all the way up to A4, I think. Um, A5. And then in here, you can, if you can see that, you can shift these so it changes the size of them. So say for example you wanted an A6, you put it on the A6 setting, you put the envelope in and then you stamp it and it cuts out the binder rings. And it also means that you'll get an even, by measuring this bit here to be the same and then using the hole punch it means you're going to have a consistent envelope every time. So, I wasn't asked about those envelopes, but I thought I'd, I thought I'd let, give you a quick rundown. But yeah, they're made the exact same way. So we'll go through it one more time. I have turned my laminator off though, so hopefully this one doesn't mess up too much. Um, so find the fold. Now see this one? See how it looks like it's? I don't know if that's it, but that would be. I would have to get rid of that envelope. Like if there was cat hair like that or like string or like dust, dirt, crumbs, anything, you, I have to get rid of it. Um, some people may not, but I do. So it's really important to keep your station clean. And then you just cut it so it's got a half a centimetre around the edge. And then your money goes in there. Um, I'll get some money out. So if this was a note, fold it in half, and this size pretty much fits perfectly. So that's what it looks like when it's got money in it. So it pretty much fits, it does fit all the way down, but then I don't know what has money and what doesn't, so I always leave just a little bit poking out so I know what's got money in it and what hasn't. And that's how you make an envelope. Um, hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. <laughs> um, if it wasn't, let me know down in the comments and I'm happy to answer um, any questions you have. Um, so, quick summary. When, you, when you're choosing whatever material you're going to make your envelopes out of, make sure that you take into account the thickness of it and what laminating sheets you are going to purchase make sure that the laminator you get is also going to handle the laminating sheets and the material that you're feeding into it if not you might it might just mean that you're going to have to run it through a couple of times um, whenever you're making your envelope put down the width that you want but double the length so that when you fold it in half it's going to be the, the size you want it um, buy it's recommended you buy the container first because then you're going to know your measurements or if you know exactly what size envelope you want you can just look for a container to fit that size you don't need all of the fancy things to make these envelopes you can literally use some printer paper like blank printer paper a ruler scissors a pencil to for when you're measuring and if you don't have a laminator or laminating sheets I know that packing tape, you know that really wide, clear packing tape, um, you can use that because that will protect the paper and it will mean that you can use it multiple times. I mean it's not going to last as long as a laminated envelope but if there, if that's your option then that's, it's perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, this stuff, see this, these, these off cuts, these get everywhere if you're making them for a store they get everywhere so please be mindful of pets and children when you have these because they get everywhere 
and my cat eats plastic because she's a weirdo so I'm I have to be really diligent about cleaning them up um, keep your workspace clean if you can and clutter free um, at least while you're working on the envelopes because any dust any cat fur any hair um, any food if it gets into the laminating sheet and gets laminated um, the envelope is destroyed and you need to throw it away and if you're throwing away multiple envelopes it will eventually impact impact you through cost and loss of income because each envelope is a cost basically if you are wanting to start this as a business I I would sit down and think about your pricing so for example I'm gonna do a quick rundown because I I undercharged and I still think I undercharge sometimes with how long it takes I undercharged and I, I wasn't taking into account things so for example this um, this is 30 colors of cardstock and 60 pages now I get 200 and I want to say uh, 60 times 4 so I get 240 envelopes right so I get 240 of these out of one of these so that gets me like nearly two and a half sets out of each one of these so when I buy one I split the cost in half because each box is going to get half basically then every time I do a set of um, a set of envelopes I do I have a hundred envelopes I get six envelopes in each sheet so that means I'm going to go through 16 sheets of laminate for one box. So now you've got the cost of the cardstock and the cost of the laminating sheets. Then you need the box that you're putting it in. Okay, you need to take into account, are you using packaging? So for example, mine gets wrapped in a brown paper. It gets wrapped in twine and then it has a thank you tag on it. Um, and a sticker so I need to take all of those costs into effect and in keep it in mind when you're thinking about starting a business because I I hate when I hate undercharging because it takes a lot of time and effort to make these um, for an Etsy store so please keep all that in mind if you are going to be starting a business also Etsy at the moment is flooded with cash stuffing and budgeting items um, it seems to be it's really taking off now there is a lot of stores and a lot of amazing products so keep that in mind when you start your store it might take a while for you to kind of get the get the customers coming in so please be patient and be kind to yourself and have fun um, have fun with them I am kind of enveloped out at the moment I I had a massive sale for my birthday and I got like 72 orders of boxes so I've been doing like thousands of these envelopes so I'm kind of over it at the moment but I do enjoy making them it's very it's very relaxing work when you're not on a deadline um, I hope this helped I hope that you're able to follow along with the directions if you have any questions any concerns if you need help walk going through it please reach out in the comments below. I am happy to organize a time to work through it with you through um, through Messenger or chat or anything like that. So please, please, please reach out if you need to. Um, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a bit of a random video for my channel, but I, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to live, laugh, love, and when life gets hard, just roll it in glitter. Bye, guys. <music>